By entering prisons, prisoners are condemned to imprisonment for their crimes. They should not be condemned to HIV and AIDS. There is no doubt that governments have a moral and legal responsibility to prevent the spread of HIV among prisoners and prison staff and to care for those infected. They also have a responsibility to prevent the spread of HIV among communities. Prisoners are the community. They come from the community, they return to it. Protection of prisoners is the protection of our communities. Based on my experience, sexual activities are rampant in our prisons. Homosexual life in prison. We weren't brief about this, but we were aware of these things. So we take all the necessary precautions to keep ourselves free from this. I, you, I just saw it, so nobody told me. You know, it was, I said it wasn't, you know, it was more of a hush-hush. I said it wasn't as publicized as it, as it is today. They're crowded, they're um, dark, old, filthy cells without sanitary conveniences. They're not conducive to good health. Panas Caribbean is a non-governmental organization that has been working in the Caribbean for the past 25 years to help peoples of the region speak out on issues that affect them. In 2008, the organization which helps to raise awareness and spark action on issues affecting marginalized, overlooked and vulnerable groups within the Caribbean, published the book No Sex or Condoms Here, authored by journalist Andrea Donna. The book looks at HIV prevention, treatment and care in Jamaican prisons. This investigative report has copped several awards and has influenced us to turn the camera on issues of sexual activities in Jamaican prisons. The ripple effect of HIV and AIDS transmission in Jamaican prisons and the severe impact that could have on public health and the lives of individuals is a serious concern. An advanced media production will take the next few minutes to explore this issue. I saw that kind of touch and smile and plain, you know, you just know that that relationship is a little bit strange or off. You'll find an inmate might be a, a rowdy person, vile, and, and an official will take him and, and put him among these individuals just to belittle that person. I have seen one of the most startling um, sites whereby lovers I was like a counselor among three inmates who were lovers. And I did this interview in front of a superintendent. People would come to me, ask me for condom. I have my moral values, but I put safety, medical safety, in front of moral, morality when it comes on to my profession. It doesn't mean that I am agreeing with what persons are doing. But, look at this scenario. Persons using plastics to improvise for condom. I'm not going to support the authorities of the government giving male, I'm talking about in a male prison, giving males condom, issuing condoms. That is, you know, an abomination that is so distasteful and disgusting. I believe in being sensible at all times. If something's occurring, then protect. All attempts to get an interview from the Department of Corrections failed. However, Major Richard Rees, the Commissioner of Corrections at the time the book was published, said there was no official reports on sexual activities in Jamaican prisons. I have seen where people have made improper advances and create a problem, 
major risk conceded in the book. As far as I know, we haven't had an official report on sex in the prisons. We do know the position of the Department of Correctional Services and the Ministry of National Security with regards to sex and condoms in the prisons. It's a no sex, no condom zone. So essentially, that's the perspective from which we operate. It is a reality. We cannot be like you know, the chicken with the head in the sand. No need to hush it, you know, cover it up, sweep it on the wrong rug. We need to say up front, this is what is happening. Stop lying about it. Stop covering about it and say this is what's happening. We need to make the public aware. We need to make people aware. Former UN AIDS country representative for Jamaica, the Bahamas and Cuba, Miriam Malua states, whether we like it or not, sex happens. It happens with people wishing it to happen or not. A lot of rape also happens, which means that some people who are arrested for very petty offenses, they go into prisons, they are raped, which they didn't want, and they come out with an HIV infection. She went on to say, we have to be pragmatic. We have to be responsible. There are aspects of their human rights that has been breached significantly, one sole point. A prisoner being raped. What is being done? I will tell you. You see, during the night, as we are seeing the movie, these things happen. An inmate who goes through these abuse will never come out and speak. They are so hurt. They are so destroyed that sometimes it, it is it is hard for even them to even explain these things. And all you can hear is scream. You are from a black over another side, and. It's not that you're going to see these things because every man is in a housing. It's not just inmates, but officials. You'll find to see some of the people who are involved into these things. There is only one case I can ever remember so far whereby somebody was prosecuted for such act. And that was when about 2003 when I reported such a matter calling the police, I probably breached all act. It was traumatic for me too, to see how they, what they did to this um, young man. Those I've worked with on and off told me that they have seen that happen. A certain amount of males coming together, ganging up on one male and having you know, sex with him and each one would take their turn. We're not particularly exposed to the sexual hazards. I'm not quite certain what they are. In general, in general, in, in, in prisons, from the research, from the background, we do know that these things are possibilities. In terms of it being documented by the National HIV STI program, we have no such documentation. We've been reluctant to take a sufficiently proactive approach to HIV, and we've been reluctant to look at legislative um, issues that affect people's access to treatment, such as the um, retention of the buggery laws, such as the prohibitions against prostitution, because if it is something that could get you locked up, why should you tell somebody? This is between March and October in 2006 when the research was done, and it's 2,034 inmates, of which 1,560 decided to participate and it shows the, the results, how many were positive, how many were negative, how many had STIs and that sort of thing. And so this information is, is, was crucial to our decision to establish a program and even more recently scale up the program. Right now we have also scaled up to include um, an intervention among the visitors at the, of the inmates. We do know that men who have sex with men are part of our, um, of our most at-risk populations and so we're we're genuinely concerned uh, but our hands are tied and for that reason we work along with with them they're doing the same prevention education treatment and support as we can as much as we can there are not enough psychiatrists employed there are not enough doctors employed there's um, not enough orderlies people who are ill don't have proper facilities for, to be treated in um, and it's, it's well, well documented that the conditions are inhumane and condu not conducive to, to proper health. Mm -hmm. They're crowded, they're um, dark, old, filthy cells. Quite a few um, inmates dying in prison, not being able to be treated. I mean, especially when you have the pneumonias, the diarrheal illnesses starting, there wasn't much we could do. And, being placed in an area that we call hospital, it was difficult. 
no nursing care, you are at the mercy of other inmates. I mean, people would die with food beside them because there were no person, nobody available to, to feed them. I absolutely support compassionate release. I clearly would be a dependent on an assessment of the person's illness, of their person's understanding of their illness and the constraints that it would place on them, um, the depth of their suffering, etc. And also clearly one would have to factor into account their crimes. Well, we have no place to advocate for that. That is the decision of the Department of Corrections. What we can do though is we, we can facilitate their care and treatment while they're there and ensure that we, we try to get them you know, stabilized because the process of wasting or you know, getting to that point where it looks hopeless is typically based on, uh, on something, possible, possibility that a person is not adhering to their medication because once there is 100% adherence, you know, possibilities are endless. You know, it, it, it basically becomes a chronic disease, no different from diabetes or hypertension. Uh, we aim to test inmates upon arrival at the institution. So it's a part of whatever other orientation there is. They're counseled, they're offered a test, they are able to refuse. Uh, we test for HIV, syphilis and hepatitis, um, hepatitis B. We use information education materials, we use videos, uh, we have one-on-one -on -one counseling sessions with persons who feel they need and that additional counseling. Persons typically are incarcerated for varying periods. So a person might be there for three months, a person might be there for life. And the, the possibility of being released is always there and therefore that is what we're preparing inmates for, that in reintroduction um, into society, whether they are HIV positive or not. What one wants to come out of prison is somebody who has been helped, who has been comforted, who has been made a better person, not somebody who has been raped and abused and infected and ill-treated because they come back out, if that's the circumstances, they come back out angry. We do what, as much as we can do short of a condom demonstration or distributing condoms. So we try to increase knowledge and we try to provide that on, ongoing interaction which we hope will change behaviors that trend towards any possible sexual activity or any possibility of unprotected sex. People need to be educated or to be informed of what is happening. So there needs to be the proper information and education right to the public first of all. People need to be forewarned because to be forewarned is to be forearmed. And when you are forearmed, then you can protect yourself. The public will never get to know the full truth of what happened behind this prison bar unless they go in and experience what is behind there for themselves.